seconds. 27. 26. 25 seconds. 24. 23. 22 seconds. 21 seconds. 21 seconds. 19. 18. 17 seconds. 16. 15 seconds. 14. 13 seconds. 11. 10 seconds. 9. 8. 7. 6. It's white. Copy. 5 seconds. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I love that intro. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. That was <laughs> remarkable. Hi, folks. <laughs> remarkable. Hi, folks. Uh, hi folks and welcome back to the Scotch Tracker. Uh, today joining us is um, the composer of the forthcoming show Star Trek Prodigy. Uh, how do you pronounce your name? Uh, it's Nami Melumad. Cool. So yes. thank you very much for coming on the show. That's great to Thank you for having to me. This is so cool. And I'm very excited to talk anything Star Trek. So um, anytime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. So uh, like for your um, earliest memories of Star Trek? Okay, my first contact was really a, a, a lame one because uh, I was a kid in the 90s <laughs> and then uh, I think I think it was TMG playing in the background in, in my, my family's house and I did not understand any of it. Like it was very, you know, there were point people with pointed ears and everyone was wearing different uniforms and I, I was like not really getting any of it and it was in English so I didn't understand most of it, <laughs> um, but it wasn't until later when I actually, I kind of came to Star Trek because of the music of it, to be honest. Like it was Jerry Goldsmith's oh. theme. And then I heard the Alexander uh, Karaj theme and I'm like, this is this is so, so incredible. So I think what really drew me was was the music and it's, it's kind of like a circle back, um, you know, for me t to be working on, on this amazing <laughs> franchise. like. Um, and especially on, on a show that features Janeway, because Vajra is my, my favorite um, track so far. <laughs> I mean, it could be Prodigy uh, down the line, but, but right now it's it's uh, Voyager. So just, um, you know, hearing her talk, it's uh, it's just absolutely so rewarding personally. Like, you know, I, I'm very, very grateful to be part of it. So, and just, I mean, yeah, <laughs> just to get to, to be part. Yeah, it's amazing. You guys are in for a great ride. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait. I mean, we're all, we, what we've seen is very intriguing. It's totally different. And yet at the same time, invokes the same kind of spirit of adventure, curiosity, and character driven that, that we're used to for Star Trek. So it, we're, we're, we've been hearing so much about it and, and getting little <laughs> tidbits but we haven't gotten it yet so we can't wait <laughs> well it's coming pretty soon it's like uh yeah. october 28th in in the us and canada um so yeah and i i agree with you it's very character based um there's a lot of pretty you know you're you're gonna get to to meet the characters um like the, their actual personalities and we also go in you know into motifs for for these characters so musically i'm i'm kind of tying it together um and for me, it, it did remind me, like when I first read it, uh, read the script, screenplays, it, it did remind me of like the old Zurich track, track shows. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, for, for me, it's a, it's, it felt really good and it, very emotional. So I, I like when there's, um, you know, there, there are adventures that happen in every episode, but there's also something that ties together, you know, as, as a mm -hmm. season. So, yeah, very excited. And, so and did you also like do some... Oh, I'm sorry, Pian. Sorry, that that was like one of my questions, like whether you like you approach it from like more of a uh, like writing um, motifs for the characters, or like whether you focus more on like the story. Um, well, it's it's both together because if mm. you have a, a a moment that is more about Jankum, or it's it's so great that the names have been exposed, I can actually talk about it. Um, but in, and there is a moment that is more about Zero, so you know it it will be story based. It's always for me with music, it's always story based. You always want to mm. um, address what's what's happening on screen, especially with animation. That you know, music has such a uh, an integral part of moving the story forward and you know, adding pace and drama and excitement and shape to every scene. But it's also about the characters and, and it does fit. Like, you know, you have to tie it in a, in a certain way that, that works 
for that character in the scenario which in they're at, if it's danger or a comedy moment or excitement or hope or fear. So you can play around with those themes to fit that particular emotion that happens. And, and the thing with animation, uh, especially on this show, it's like it's moving very fast. So, you know, where you were 20 seconds ago is not where you're at now. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's moving very quickly um, and I love it. It's it's great, provides you so much opportunity to, to do colors. And those characters are so different um, as you probably guessed and they all come from different places. So um, yeah, you, you get you get to, to really play with the orchestra and like some synth stuff. Like it's, it's very, it's very fun to, to make each of them like distinct, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's it's a more traditional approach to, to scoring. That that's how I like to do it. Like you know, I've got themes, got motifs, very like you know, <laughs> kind of like the music I grew up on. So yeah, I was going to ask you got kind of got your feet wet in Star Trek with the Star Trek short <laughs> tracks. Tell so tell us a little bit about working on that and and, and oh my god, what was, was that like? That was a call of my dreams. It was so fun. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I started working with, uh, Michael Giacchino, who, uh, we all know is like an incredibly amazing composer and I grew up on his stuff and I, I loved his Star Trek as well. Um, and then we did American Pickle together. Um, mm -hmm. and at some point, uh, you know, during that time, um, he actually, uh, connected me with, with Alex Gritzman and he, you know, they offered me to do that, that short and I got so so, so, so excited, especially that, like, you know, it, it's the legendary characters, like, you know, Spock, like, I, I just love, love Spock so much. And, you know, getting the opportunity, to, I mean, it felt like a, like a huge responsibility, too, because his yeah, birthday on the legacy, Enterprise, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, and you're like, whoa, like, I'm trusted with this. It's, you know, it was an unbelievable moment for me. Um, and luckily it happened very quickly, so I didn't have time to process. And I'm very grateful for that because it was like, <laughs> uh, my agent called me, she's like, what are you doing tomorrow? And I'm like, I don't know, like having lunch with you? And then she's like, no, you're going to go to the spotting session at Santa Monica. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like that was, that was just incredible. Um, oh, wow. So yeah, walking into there and also walking into a place where everyone is trackies and everyone like really, you know, are very passionate about it. Um, so it was just, you know, I, they threw me in the water and it was just, just great. Like, you know, you gotta swim. So, yeah. um, so yeah, I, I wrote the, the score. Um, we did a couple passes with, you know, uh, feedback and, and, uh, there, there was like some really, really great ideas, uh, that the producers gave me. And, uh, then, uh, we recorded it at Warner brothers. Uh, I think we had like 40 or 45, um, musicians. So it's really cool. Um, mm -hmm. And then we mixed it. This the whole thing was pretty quick. It was like maybe maybe three weeks or four weeks, and then it aired. <laughs> like holy shit, this is <laughs> you know it was very quick. It's wow, a very nice turnaround. You know, because a lot of a lot of productions, especially well, this was 2019, I think. But these days, it's uh, some some productions are, are longer because of all the virus stuff. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was and it was such an incredible experience just just to be you know, part of that universe. And then, um, yeah, also the, the, the option that I, you know, I could actually use the, the famous theme, you know, and for me, it's like, it was so wow. fun to do it, you know, cause I'm like, okay, we, we, get, we are allowed to quote it. Um, so I really wanted to, to create something that, you know, embodies that original, you know, the original Star Trek sense, but also, you know, in, in a new turn. So, um, yeah. I hope that was good. <laughs> I think it was. <laughs> I mean, but uh, I I enjoyed it very much. Cool. That is so cool. Yeah. Uh, very, one very question. Cool. One question. I was wondering. Um, I'm not sh entirely sure. Like as you were saying, like how much you can talk about things. Like you, you mentioned the character <laughs> names. Like you should finally talk about those. Uh, yeah. One question I had was like whether you'd be including like any of the like previous Star Trek uh, music, like in Star Trek Prodigy? Um, well, I am quoting occasionally uh, the, the original fanfare from uh, Alexander Crouch. Mm. Um, 
that's pretty much it. <laughs> I mean, but this is about like uh, licensing rights. And, uh, you know, I wish I could quote like more, uh, you know, as long as it fits, but like, unfortunately, uh, we're not allowed to do that. <laughs> so, um, so no yeah. Voyager music with Janeway's scenes, um, I guess. Yeah. No Voyager music. Uh, I mean, there, there's like some stuff that are, you know, resembling it or, 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 you know, in the sound of it are, something of a memory to it but like it's mm -hmm. it's definitely not budget no <laughs> um yeah you, you can't do that so um mm -hmm. but also we're doing something else we're doing something yeah, new yeah, and we're, we're doing yeah. i mean yeah. yes it's it's uh, might not have you know, been appropriate yeah exactly so uh you know you, you want you, you also don't want to do i mean not just in star trek like in, in a lot of uh you know cinematic universe you don't want to um overuse things um you know you we want to do it really delicately and and when it's the most impactful moment to do it you know right if you get the theme yeah. all the time it's it's just not exciting yeah anymore. It as loses, if, it's, it's as dramatic if it was, flair yeah. if it was earned you know if it was earned by mm -hmm. the characters that's when you want to have the theme that's when you will get the most emotional impact uh you know on the viewer so mm -hmm. um you want to be uh very particular on your cho choice of when to use the theme Mm hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> what was it like to work on, uh, you know, a different medium with Medal of Honor above and beyond? What oh. know, was the, was the game is, you know, was the I know it's still music, but what was that experience? How did that differ from from other work from other work? Um, yeah. yeah. So uh, video games are, are definitely <laughs> different. Um, until then, I, I mainly did like TV and and films, and then you have this linear storyline, and you always follow the characters and you follow the story. And I'm I'm a very story -dri driven composer, um, so having that freedom of like, okay, this is the general story, this is the general mm -hmm. thing that's happening in in the level of where the player is playing, um, and then you know you get you get an animated thing, you know, so some some sort of a like a an animatic for, for the game, but it's it's very you know preliminary. Um, you don't really see the the you know not all the characters are there. Um, not you know there's not much you know it's it's a gameplay that somebody you know recorded, but mm -hmm. it's not it's not you know it depends on what the player is going to do. So you kind of want to structure the music in a way that is um, interactive, so it will interact mm -hmm. with whatever the player is doing. Um, so what we were doing on the game is to stay musical. Um, we divided every piece to three pieces, <laughs> basically every level to three pieces, where one had like um, low intensity and then one had like a medium intensity, and one had a very very crazy intensity. So the first part is like stealth. It's like when when the player explores things around and mm -hmm. you know, they, they're just you know trying to find out where they are, what they're supposed to do, what the mission is. Um, and maybe, you know, a few tackles with the enemy soldiers. Um, and then the, the second uh, part of it is more, more of a combat, but not, not crazy combat just yet, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and then the third part uh, would usually be, okay, so this is like full on, you know, battle, like tanks, uh, like full units. It was very crazy. Um, so, but, but the idea was to, to stay on the same theme, like, you know, and thematically move between, so it does feel cohesive. Um, and then there was all the callbacks from like, for the original Medal of Honor score, <laughs> which <laughs> I really enjoyed. Like I, again, I love doing that stuff where I'm, you know, I get I get to quote my my favorite themes. Um, so yeah, it was really fun. Um, it's a yeah. I actually tried to play it, and it's so hard. I don't know how people do that. <laughs> Have you played it? No, no. no. Uh... <laughs> It's really hard. I have to give it a whirl. <laughs> <laughs> it's very tricky. The glasses and everything. You have like these stuff, and it, yeah, actually, I turned in their office, like, and <laughs> it was it was very embarrassing, especially given that I I was a soldier like back in the day, um, and and so my my you know I, I would expect to know better how to use those stuff, but it was <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was really hard. <laughs> yeah, I know you were um you know as part of your your service, I believe it's part yeah. of you part of your citizenship. <laughs> 
you spent I don't know how long. It's, um, it's two years. I, I was never two years. I thought it would might but, be two years with yeah, the Israel Defense Forces, and that must have definitely did that put a kind of a kink in your practicing your music or doing your music <laughs> for a while. I mean, I, I I can't see that. I see that as an inherent conflict of <laughs> time. <laughs> that is, it is. Um, well, you know, at the time I was like eighteen. You, you always enlist when oh, you're eighteen. Okay. So it's like right after high school and you don't really know what you want to do with your life. So it's actually okay, you know, to be like, yeah. you know, let's do those two years. Um, I was not combat or anything. Actually, my, my job was an interviewer. So um, oh. it was mainly to connect with people and, and hear their stories and, and see how they fit or don't fit in, in the, that, you know, military system. Um, so what I was actually taking from that is 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 more, more the relationships and the human interaction stuff and like how to you know how to connect with people and how to like you know socialize so it was it was actually pretty good and also how to read people and like you know <laughs> that kind of stuff. i would imagine you were probably <laughs> very very good at that yeah know? yeah I, th I think it was um mm -hmm. and and i wasn't shy anymore like in at, at school i was actually a little shy so this actually really helped the confidence part of, of the job um so yeah but but yeah it, it is very time consuming so i was mainly playing guitar with my friends you know just we were singing and like i had this like uh, portable keyboard that i took with me um <laughs> so but it was mainly you know mainly having fun with music rather than actually writing oh, i and knew then, you would find a way to yeah you know <laughs> i i yeah uh, music the thing is it's like a drug it's very addictive um you know once i'm near a keyboard it's very hard to stop uh, so I guess it's the best drug of all of them, right? Like, you know, alcohol yeah. and then, and you know, whatever smoking, it's, it's not healthy, but music is healthy. Um, so yeah, um, it, it did put like a, a halt on, on, you know, my plans to, to become a composer, but like, you know, I wasn't really sure, super sure at the time, like how, how to even approach this. Um, so, it, you know, I think, I think it was also important to, to, to do that. Um, mm -hmm. So, and it also tells, teaches you a lot about self-discipline. <laughs> Which is also, you know, needed for what you do, yeah. Oh my God, yes, you do need yeah. the self-discipline at 2 a.m. when you're doing a revision and you're like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> or like the picture has changed uh, from, you know, and it happens all the time, not, not just on Prodigy, but like on everything, like, you know, things are so versatile and so dynamic. And basically the picture is not released until it's, it's not done until it's released. And actually after it's done, it, after it's released, it, it's still not done. <laughs> like, you know, mm -hmm. it's just released. <laughs> so yeah. um, a lot of times there'd be last minute changes um, and it's fine, you know, you just, you handle them and it's it's great. It, eventually it, it makes it better. Um, Cause I wondered about that, like how much time you get for each episode and, and like uh, whether like the musicians that are recording for uh, Prodigy, like I've had to like record it in at home or you know in their own space due to the the pandemic and stuff. Um, no, actually, we got no. very lucky, but we started recording uh, once things have already kind of settled, you know, with with mm. the whole COVID procedure stuff. Um, so we we are actually recording. We're recording in Europe, um, and and the players are together in you know. In, in the actual mm. studio so it's not like you know we don't because it's it's really hard um I'm, I'm very glad that we're not doing it because recording every player separately in their home studio is a mess to to like just just to edit all, mm. all of this recordings um and then they're not yeah. in the same space so you have you know it's way more mixing in terms of like getting everyone into that same space with the mix um and and so mm. and also it, it's very time consuming for the musicians because they have to you know, operate their own portal sessions or whatever software they're using for recording. And it's, yeah. it's a lot just, just technically. Um, so yeah, we got very lucky. We're doing it like remotely um, in Europe <laughs> and they, they've been great. Like it's a, it's in Budapest. They're, they're amazing, amazing players. And I'm, I'm most cool. like, I'm in awe of how they read everything. First time they see it, they pr do the first take, you know, obviously there's a little bit of mistakes or like, you know, but usually it's good. <laughs> and then <laughs> second take is like, wow. And then third take, you know, we're fixing some stuff, maybe changing a few dynamics, changing a few articulations. But at the end of the, you know, by, I don't know, 10 minutes or 12 minutes or so, the cue is magnificent. And you're like, 
how did they do that? <laughs> There's mm. geniuses. That that's the kind of genius that you know. I've I've never been able to to read like that. It's very impressive. Mm. You have it's, to be I, so I was wondering. musical. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was wondering how much it's changed, like in the in the mix or mix down of. Uh, you know, like I was wondering, like if there's any uh, quantization, I think that's what it's called. <laughs> used um, yeah, I mean, feet. usually, yeah, they're all we're always almost always recording to click uh, because you want to mm. fit the picture exactly. Uh, so the time code mm. of the picture, especially with animation, there are like a lot of moments that you really want to hit, or the action should start right on this bit, and and, and it has to be it has to be that way. Yes, you can get away with some music editing afterwards if, if the picture has changed or, you know, if you want to push it for one or two frames. But if you need to push it for more than that, you really, you know, it's, it can get messy. So you really you won't want to try to be as exact as you can. Um, you can do uh, things on, on the stick. That's what it's called, like, when, you know, when, when it's just a conductor. Um, if it's like an emotional... Theme or, or something that is a little less, um, you know, pressing. But yeah, it's rarely you rarely do that. We we I don't think we did it on Prodigy so far. Mm. Um, yeah, but yeah, the the quantization thing that you're talking about is is actually a, a, a term for MIDI uh, when when you're working on on the. I'm actually mm. impressed that you're you're familiar. Um, so it's a. Uh, it's a process that you do for your media. Well, like if you record things into your session um, and they're not exactly on time, then the computer is able to uh, calculate it. So it's, it is on time, <laughs> everything. Mm -hmm. Like you played eighth notes or 16th notes or um, quarter notes or I don't know, triplet, whatever. Um, and then actually when they play it live, the quantization is a little off because, you know, when you have 40 string mm -hmm. players, not all of them exactly hit on the same moment i mean it's very very close and i think that's what actually makes it better because it's human and it's flawed yeah. a little bit flawed um but yeah sorry i'm talking too much about music like i i can go on <laughs> you gotta <laughs> stop me <laughs> well how has your family responded to your your success at such a, a young age and you're, you're 32 you are young <laughs> And uh, oh my God. <laughs> and you were just a bundle of energy, and it's and it's it's not surprising to me that oh, you're, yeah. uh, you know, so so yeah. music musical, uh, that your talent lies in music is, is what I should say, um, because you are classic pianist, uh, a flute, a uh, flutist, and a guitar. So right. you know, and and your your family must have known that you were heading into that direction i would imagine at an early age so oh what God. is their reaction to your success here in in this major arena in, in the entertainment realm um okay well first let me uh let me fix you on the energy thing it's just coffee uh, i'm following the advice that counts that the counts advice, it's okay. the, the advice of my favorite captain um you know there's there's coffee in that fridge um you know or that mm -hmm. nebula so um yes coffee all, all the way and chocolate um so, well, which goes with with captain janeway because captain yeah. janeway is a coffee captain sulu not so much uh picard not so much kirk definitely so yeah you, yes. you are in the, yes. the range yeah. of the great captains yeah um coffee black um uh, mm -hmm. that's a yeah it's a very a big big fan favorite here like rock to um, yeah. yeah that too <laughs> <laughs> um and romeo and ale um okay mm -hmm. uh so <laughs> yeah there, there's there's some of that too uh Balance out, you know, it yeah. has to balance out a little. <laughs> yeah. Um, wait, actually. <laughs> oh, oh nice. this is for beers, right? So very cool. Very cool. But um, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, so uh they had no choice to be honest. <laughs> 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 I mean, but also they supported it. Like, yeah, I mean, it all it's all kind of my sister's fault because uh, I have an older sister and mm -hmm. she was playing piano when we grew up. And um, as the younger sister, I always wanted to do what she did because that's, yeah, you know, exactly. that's the kind of the character. Uh, you know, she loved the Brexit boys. So I love the Brexit boy. And then she went to the Girl Scouts and I went to the Girl Scouts. And then she played piano and I wanted to play too. So, you know, eventually I was eight years old and I started you know, learning. 
And then um, I really got in, into it. <laughs> so um, it kind of took off. And then they started the, the school orchestra at my uh, elementary school. And it was like some sort of a wind band and they chose an instrument for each kid. And for me, they gave me the oboe, <laughs> which is, it's kind of like for stubborn kids, it's really good. Cause I guess they knew that I will stick to it, <laughs> which I did for two years. <laughs> but um, I used to break all the reeds um, you know, the, the <laughs> has these like small reeds and it's, it's wooden and it's very easy to break them. So, um, it, it became a pretty much of a big expense because every reed was like $30 or so. Oh. <laughs> and I, I didn't know how to make them. <laughs> and like once a week, a reed has gone and then the instrument, the lessons. And then my mom was like, well, how about we take an instrument that does not break? <laughs> like, <laughs> how about a flute? <laughs> But also, I mean, according to her versions, she says that she also didn't like me to play like this, and she thought I should soar like the flute. Um, oh. And I kind of, I kind of agree with that. Uh, I do love the oboe. Like one day, if I ever retire, I will not retire. But like, if I ever have time, I will definitely pick up the oboe again. Um, so yeah, that was that was a. Uh... Oh, also, yeah, there was some. There was another orchestra in like in town, so I started playing like actual to sit in the orchestra. And it, it was a lot of classical music, a lot of arrangements, some musicals. Um, and then in high school, I, I still wasn't sure about music, but like I, I did go to the music uh, classes. I also took chemistry. Um, but then I found out I really, really, really love it, and I love st telling stories with music. Like we did a musical, and I really enjoyed writing the songs, but also you know coming up with music to accompany the, the, the actual play. Mm -hmm. um, it was just great. And after after school, I, I, I actually, my first jobs as a composer, it was for theater, um, you know, cause I really did enjoy like the, you know, the, the you can you can help a story, you, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's like all the arts are coming together. You have music, you have the singers, you have the players, you have the direction, you have the, the costumes and like everything was, was together. And that's, that's also why I love film so much because you also add cinematography and like uh, editing and like there, there's such a it's such a big form of art like it's bigger mm. than than just the music alone so I really love that um, and my parents like they yeah they totally supported it <laughs> mm. and I, I think it was really important too like because I, I don't think I could have done it without their you know excitement about you know all of it like and it was you know they had to endure a lot um <laughs> with practicing and like i was making loud music on you know cubase all the time um there was a period i tried to play the violin i mean i i if that didn't crack them then you know they deserve metal for that i think <laughs> but yeah um, i didn't take the do you, do, <laughs> do you have a favorite uh classical composer um yeah not sure maybe either mozart or beethoven like it depends on on my uh mm. on the day because beethoven is just so emotional for me um and mozart is just such a genius like every time i listen to mozart i then you know i go and i i can write something after that you know and and it's completely different than what i, I just heard you know very different mm. but it just gives a lot of inspiration and it's really uplifts your your spirit um, I do love a lot of other classical. Um, Pr Prokofiev is amazing. Shostakovich, um, Rachmaninoff, Tchaikovsky, um, yeah, <laughs> Ravel, Ravel, uh, Britain. Okay, yeah, this. Uh, I love music in general. It's really great. <laughs> cool. Did we get a question from someone, Dan? And some. Oh yeah, earlier. Um... A quick question, like, what, what is your native language, basically? Native language, Hebrew. Um, Hebrew, I, I speak Hebrew. I can do the Hebrew accent. That's, uh, it's more like this. Uh, if you talk Hebrew, English in Hebrew, it sounds like this. Mm. Uh, very, very nice, yes. In music, actually, it's, it's very different because it's like Hebrew is, um, your words are, are uh, separated. And mm. if, if, if you want to get rid of that, you just slur the words like in music, and then it sounds like American English, ah. right? <laughs> <laughs> you just slur it together. It's like it's, it's just like music. So, uh, yeah, I grew up in Israel. I, I was there for twenty five years, and then I moved to the U.S. 
And you studied at Jer Jerusalem Academy of Music and Dance. Yeah, I, I was a great dancer. Ah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Three years of training and I still don't know how to dance. No, um, uh, yeah, I, I did study at the Academy. It was, it was for composition. Um, and we had like all these like very cool classes that were not, you know, you had the contemporary composition, but you also had like Indian music and Arabic music, like all these really cool modules and, and very different tonality stuff and instrumentation. Mm -hmm. And um, we also learned like jazz. So it was jazz harmony and jazz arrangements and big band. And there were opportunities to work with uh, one of the orchestras in Israel and uh, we could do arrangements for songs. So we, we were working with the singers. Um, there was also a class with, with the dancers <laughs> mm. to write music for their choreographies, uh, which was a lot of times for me, it was like mind blowing crazy because they did all sorts of very creative things. And I'm like, wow, like now it's really mm -hmm. pushed, me, pushed me out of my comfort zone for sure. Um, and then there was a film music class too. Uh, and I, I, there were two of them actually, like one was for the undergrad and the other one was for the grad. And I, I was like, I have to go to both. <laughs> I was a, a big addict. And, uh, yeah, we, we would look at films and analyze the music in them and, uh, try to score scenes from these movies <laughs> and miserably fail. <laughs> so <laughs> that was, uh, <laughs> it was good training. <laughs> <laughs> so there's still another uh, question. I wasn't sure what klezmer is, but um, do you play it? Klezmer. Um, I don't klezmer? play klezmer. I, I can is, write a little bit of it. Um, I'm not. Is it playing. an instrument? No, klezmer is a style of music that's uh, it's considered oh, right. Jewish music. Um, oh, right. You know, it varies. It could be like uh, usually it's happy stuff, like very very quick um, traditional Jewish mm. music. Um, but it, 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 there's like a whole variety of styles that you can, you can do. It's mm. often with clarinet and, uh, uh, violin and like a band. So, um, yeah, I, I don't play, I wish I could, I really wish I could. It's great. So, uh, regarding like unusual instruments, I wondered if there's any, if there's been any like that. Um, I was remembering like back in like the motion picture, how like, I think it was called a, a blaster or something like that. They had <laughs> in the score for uh, like the, the V'ger scenes. So I wondered if there's anything, you know, like quite unusual instruments incorporated into the, the scores for uh, Prodigy. Um, well, there, there's a one episode where I'm using a duduk. <laughs> Um, oh, but I, you know, you, you want to do these things only when they're justified, you know, when you have a specific character or, or like a, a strange planet or w whatever, you know, that fits the character. Um, mm -hmm. I do like using vocals. So that there's quite a lot of that in the score and in, in several styles. Um, I think, uh, I mean, which other instruments, I mean, there's occasionally a guitar, <laughs> which uh, mm. is not cool. really exactly what you would expect. Uh, there's a little bit of jazzy stuff too. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'd say that's, that's pretty much for like ethnic or different type of, uh, and you obviously you have like a large variety of synths, um, mm -hmm. that, that really can be very, yeah, very different. <laughs> oh, you're backwards. Okay. Dan yeah. does that sometimes. It just, <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> happens. Screen sometimes freezes. Yeah. Oh, the whole horizontal yeah. vertical thing, you know. I love your background photo. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> from Prodigy. Uh, so I thought yeah. this was quite a good question. Uh, do you incorporate your own voice in any of your cues? Um, I have, yes. <laughs> oh. I, I totally have. Um, I'm not a, a, a singer, but if you layer things, I mean, I can sing. Mm. I'm just, you know, I wouldn't go on a solo career right now. Um, but yeah, actually, um, for Q and A, there was a, a choir at the background at the end. <laughs> that's that's me. <laughs> mm. oh, cool. Nobody recognized that it was me, but it was me. <laughs> yes, that's and so you cool. just record layers, um, you know. Yeah. And it, it you know with the right mixer and the right tone, it, it works. <laughs> mm -hmm. And be, like recording those, do you need to like vary like the distance you are from the mic and stuff like that. Um, yes and no. Like I, mm. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of like, you know, if you write good music, it will sound good no matter where you record it. If you record it in your bathroom, you know, it will still work. Like Billie Eilish did her stuff 
in you know in her room like you don't have yeah. to and and even you know um same here like a, a lot of most of the stuff i ever did i you know it wasn't with fancy orchestras and fancy equipment and fancy you know it was just like you know a computer yeah. and nice you know basic things like i'm still using a mic from like seven years ago <laughs> so you know and it was 150 bucks <laughs> so you know obviously if there's budget then sure let's hire a big choir but mm -hmm. you know and there's like basics that you want to know when you come to to record um a, yeah. a mic or an instrument you know um there, there are basic stuff that you want to do but essentially what, what i'm trying to say is like if, if you're you've got the talent and the passion and and you know the energy to do it you can do it without the budget and without the big you know the big mm -hmm. um equipment you don't need it it'll still work mm -hmm. you know it's funny you should mention billy eilish because dan and i were just talking about her with the uh, no time to die coming out pretty oh, soon oh man and i can't wait yeah yeah is that like i was wondering if that's one of the franchise properties that you'd love to oh my god i wish yeah yeah one day it's definitely on my my to-do list yes <laughs> Not a james bond theme i mean once once you've done that you know oh you're, my god. You're, you're, yes you're... oh yeah yeah for sure and also i i just love like all the scores for that like i mean there's, yeah there's a big side of me that loves you know the, the more jazzy harmony world and yeah it's it's uh, that's what's really exciting about films or, or tv like you, you get to do things that are n not just in the same world all the time you know you're mm -hmm. you can dive between styles and genres and you know you can do a comedy and you can do a drama and you can do um thriller you can do spy th you know it, there's so yeah. many things action like and there's so many types of action and so right yeah um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I can't wait to, you know, to do all these things. It takes time though. And, and I have to be very patient. Like, you know, it's a, it's a slow build, <laughs> kind of like our show, <laughs> slow build. What are some of the musicians you, you know, artists that you love to listen to, you know? Um, well, I, I love Billy. Um, I don't, uh, I love Annie DeFranco. I know that it's like kind of a very <laughs> specific <laughs> Um, but her songs have always been like, um, both the lyrics and her, her like guitar style, the, the way that she writes for a guitar. I think mm -hmm. I'm really fascinated with, with stuff that are, that I can't fully understand if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, like, I don't know how to play it, you know? And even if I try, like I try to tab stuff, I'm, I'm looking at, and I'm like, I have no idea how she comes up with that. And I'm like, this is, this is amazing because it's just inspiring me to, to be like, okay, I can, you know, I, I need to learn how to do this. <laughs> like, you know, it's, uh, and it, it broadens your, your perspective, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so that's, that's the kind of stuff I really enjoy. I also like, you know, listening to musicals exactly for that same reason where, you know, I listen to weekend and I'm like, okay, well, how did they do that? <laughs> like, okay, what's going on here? <laughs> So the harmony is, is different. Like it's for me when I, when I listen to songs on the radio and then, it's like four chords and I, I can totally play it afterwards. I'm like, okay, this is not, there's no challenge, you know, musical challenge for me. So that's why, you know, jazz stuff or like more, um, more contemporary music is, is more, um, more my thing. And then phone scores, of course. Mm -hmm. um, well, that, so. that was one of my questions. Like if you have <laughs> any f uh, favorite uh, film composers. Oh man, <laughs> too many. Uh, uh. Yeah. I mean, I, I love, well, the obvious, uh, John Williams, Jack Goldsmith, Michael Giacchino, uh, Thomas Newman, um, Randy Newman as well, uh, Jameson Howard, um, Alexander Desplat, um, and Dudley. She's she's incredible. I don't know if you guys have heard. Um, her score for Black Book was fantastic. And then uh, she did L, I think that was uh, the Paul Verhoeven movie like from two years ago. That score, like I keep listening to it on Spotify. It's just so, so great. Um, so very, you know, talking about thriller music, like, you know, it's, it, wow. Um, who else do I really love? Um, I think I mentioned like the names I really love. <laughs> <laughs> cool. so, uh, another question's come in, like whether, uh, I think it's about like music samples, basically. 
Um, I've used libraries. virtual libraries such as Hollywood Choir, Hollywood Strings. Uh, I have not used these particular libraries. Um, I use other libraries, <laughs> but yes, of course, mm -hmm. every composer, you gotta have that on your disposal. Um, you don't have to get all of them like, you know, right away. Um, when I started out, I started with, uh, I think it was the Play Collection. It was the East West Collection. It, they recorded it here actually, like a few blocks from here on East West Studio. Um, and they had this like deal that like for a thousand dollars, you got like all their um, orchestral instruments and then some some guitars and pianos and uh, some pop stuff like pop brass. <laughs> it was very basic, but it you know it gave me enough to start with. Um, and and mm -hmm. you don't really need much more than that when you start out. Like and then yes, obviously you want to expand your um, your mockups to to sound better. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I, I guess my approach is that your mockups don't need to sound the best thing ever. If you, if you're going to record it anyway, or you can have a little bit of budget to record, you know, three musicians, then do it. Like it's, it's way more important than if, you know, you got another string library, um, you know, and it, it's more important to write the actual music good. <laughs> Uh, rather than yeah. how, you know, because eventually it will come, like, and, and maybe, you know, maybe uh, it's just that you spend so much time on technicalities when, when you can spend it on, you know, either writing more music or perfectioning your your storytelling or watching Star Trek. Like, you could you could watch Star Trek instead of doing your mock-ups, you know. It, it <laughs> is that a better use of your time? I, I think it is. So, Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah. before we went before we went live, uh, Bob and I were talking about how like the I believe like the the theme tune of Prodigy is being done by Michael yeah. uh, Giacchino. <laughs> it's a great theme. So I wonder if like I thought that was quite unusual because um, I was as I was saying to Bob, I think it's quite unusual that like the, the person that's written the theme tune. Um, Dan hasn't like worked on the series. Um, uh, yes so. and no. I mean, hasn't that happened oh, right. with uh, DS9? No, was it Voyager? Uh, and then Voyager was oh, was yeah. was uh, Jerry Goldsmith, but the score yeah, yeah. was not Jerry Goldsmith. Same for TNG. Um, mm. And I think even DS9 didn't Dennis write the the title, but then there were quite a few composers after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so. I think Dan <laughs> McCarthy still like did still scored some episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah of, of course, of course. Yeah, um, I mean, Michael and I have done that before, uh, so mm. <laughs> it's not unusual for us to that he would write like oh, a right. theme and I would like you know go along with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm actually really excited because that theme is presented in in within the show. It's it is integrated in the show in in the the moments where it deserves to be, <laughs> you mm. know, after they earned it. Um, so yeah, I'm actually really excited to, for for Michael to hear <laughs> what I did with with a lot of that stuff. Um, I think he'll, you know, I think he's he's gonna be very happy with it. Um, so yeah, no, I'm and also whatever you know, whenever I'm interested with anything that Michael wrote, I'm like, <laughs> this is amazing. Like I, it's my dream. You know, he's one of the 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 people I grew up listening to, and and he's like the sweetest man ever. Like you know, and I I love him so. Um, yeah, I you know I feel very connected yeah. to, to the things that you write. Um, so for me, it's actually it's great, you know. Because <laughs> I was saying to Bob, I think like you've got a bit similar like backgrounds where he's actually like started uh, originally like writing for games. Uh, yeah, but like you yourself. Yeah, I mean, he also he came to town and you know he didn't really you know he started from the bottom kind of thing you know like you know he was working mm. uh, marketing and then and then you know, slowly, slowly growing. And that's, that's what you did. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's inspiring, like, you know, how, how he built his career and yes, he did a lot of TV and then he did a lot of movies and he did Star Trek. <laughs> so, yeah. um, yeah. And Star Wars. So, you know, it's mm -hmm. a, yeah, there, there's a, there, there's a lot of inspiration when, when you look, you know, on, on your role models, you're like, yes. And he, you know, also family met like all of that stuff. You're like, this is this is you know this is how I want to do my life. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. and, any... and good energy too. That's so important. <laughs> is there any particular TV themes like outside of the Star Trek world that you 
kind of take some inspiration of or or just like you know saying wow that that really fits the tone of the show you know <laughs> yeah. for this for star trek or, or in general or beyond in general beyond you know going a little bit beyond star trek you know um, TV things that I like liked recently. I mean, it's not super recent, but Stranger Things. I really love that score. <laughs> mm. It's very different than what I do, but I, yeah. I can really appreciate how it contributes to the show. It gives it like character, so much character. Um, so I love that one. Uh, I did really enjoy the Queen's Gambit, <laughs> which I thought was really. Oh, have you guys yeah. watch it? Netflix. Um, I thought it was really well made and also like very very much aligning with, you know, these kind of scores, they give um, character to, you know, that only fits with that show, you know, it's a certain sound, yeah. it's like a signature. Um, and so, yeah, I, I feel that we do have that with Prodigy too. So that that was one of, you know, the things I, I came in and I was like, I, I really want to create something that is just, that's, yeah, it's Star Trek, but it is Prodigy, it's not any other, you know. Mm. And it won't be placed in any other, you know, it, it's just that. Um, so, yeah, um, Game of Thrones, same, same, same thing. It has yeah. this tone where, like, this is the tone of Game of Thrones, and here are the themes, and here are some motifs, and it really ties you up, you know, you, you listen to this theme, and it's this character, like, it's, you know, it makes you emotional just hearing the yes. music. Yeah. So, for me... Um, that's that's what I, I love um, with with TV music, um, mm -hmm. yeah. And and I know sometimes that the the TV themes of today are <laughs> a little shorter than what you know those from my generation remember. Like in comparison, say just for example, the original Hawaii Five O in comparison oh. to the yeah. remake, which was like so quick. Or SWAT, you know, I love that theme in the seventies. Like I would. I had the the little forty five, and I would play it constantly because it was extended from the from the, the. And now the 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 new version is like, it's gone as almost as soon as it starts, <laughs> you know. And I think a, a theme song is a, is almost a lost art for a lot of shows because it's just like flashing the screen, the title, and da da. It's you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, I, and I miss that. I miss those op those fancy opening credits and stuff. And thankfully, yeah. Star Trek hasn't the new Star Trek shows haven't lost that they they have a full-fledged theme you know be it discovery picard um lower yeah. decks and and now of course prodigy yeah no I, I i totally agree with you and you know there there has been i mean i'm i i can uh, also bitch a lot about music and television and film mm. <laughs> um but <laughs> i i do feel that like we're kind of going back on track slowly but surely on on what TV music should be um, mm -hmm. because I remember when I came to town like seven years ago, um, a lot of people complained that you know showrunners and directors are are really avoiding melody, and they don't mm -hmm. love melody and they don't want melody mm -hmm. and there's no such you know, and and even I experienced that a little bit with with some of my projects where you know I just a little bit of a melodic line and 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 the director would be like no no uh, let's. You know, I, I don't like that. <laughs> like, let's lose that. It works really nice without it. So, and I, I feel like, you know, now now we're slowly reverting back to, you know, to your, your good old, you know, yeah. what you were saying. The good old days where um, where music was, was more allowed to be expressive. Um, and, right. and, and to And, and yeah, the, the titles are part of it. Uh, but also just in general, more more expressivity. Like, yes, you're allowed to feel that. You're supposed to feel that, you know. And, you know, you go to the Hollywood Ball and they play music from, from films. And it's always these amazing, beautiful, melodic things, you know. Mm -hmm. the, the biggest themes, you know, not just the John Williams stuff, but, like, you know, the, the famous... Um, you know, Casablanca theme or, or yeah. um, American in Paris. Like, all, all these things are, are just, um, you know, they're big and melodic and expressive. <laughs> so, mm. um, yeah, uh, it's it's just, um, yeah, I, I really wish music, it would come back. <laughs> I think music is such an important, you know, component of of a show. Uh, you know, when you, when you hear the theme song of, say, the original Dallas, uh, you know, or or Walking Dead, which I watched the other night, and it just gets your blood going of like, you know, a scary tone, you know, and like getting you ready for it, or or the 
the more recent themes of Doctor Who. Oh um, yeah, you See, know, yeah. more more so the 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 Tenet one, you know, around that time. Um, but the, yeah, the uh, radiophonic workshops got like uh, yeah. such a history on that show and stuff. Uh, when you were st talking about like really short themes, there's one particular series that I was thinking of that I'm. Um, like Kiefer Sutherland uh, appeared in it. Was think it was called like Designated Survivor or something like that. And it's literally like just <laughs> one note or just one sting and <laughs> just one shot and that's it. Yeah, I mean sometimes it works though. I worked on a show called Absentia, yeah. and our title would come up and like right after a scene. So there was an opening scene, then there was a title, and then it ties back into directly into you know the rest of the show. So it was always like that signature sound of the title, but it was, you know, it was like five seconds long or maybe three, mm. like it was very short and it would just yeah. directly move on. Um, right, like the Mandalorians yeah. like that as well. Yeah. Um, well, now coming to think of it, there, there was a great uh, show on Amazon. I'm trying to remember what it was called uh, about the devil and the, the uh, sorry, the, like a six, it was a limited series, four or six episodes that had such great music and I can't remember what it was. You guys don't remember. Hmm. Wasn't not Lucifer. No, no, no. Oh, I'll, maybe I'll remember it by by the time. Uh, yeah, not not coming up now. But it's it's a great show. It was nominated for the title was nominated for an Emmy for the for the score. Um, but yeah, generally fantasy and and sci-fi shows really give you more opportunity as a composer to <laughs> like go for it. You know. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, both, both the showrunners are more open to that. And also, you know, it's traditionally, it's just, you know, uh, these, you, these these worlds call for more music, like more more imagination and, yeah, you know, Although, more epicness yeah. too. Although you were also like reminding me of how like in the 90s, uh, there was the whole thing about like, can they allow, you know, Rick Berman wasn't really one that uh, drums or percussion to be used in the scores that often. <laughs> There's a whole controversy yeah. about that with Ron Jones leaving and stuff. Well, you know what? You want you kind of want to be careful with drums and percussions because under dialogue, it's very heavy. Mm. <laughs> like, you want to a lot of times you want to avoid it actually, or or maybe do it just when there's no dialogue or when there's you know a, a montage sequence or you know flying somewhere. I, I don't know, like you know, riding somewhere, whatever. Um, Mm -hmm. Well, only when it really, or, or there's like an action sequence, a fight, a battle. Um, but under dialogue, it's sometimes, you know, <laughs> you want to you want to avoid, you know, because at the end of the day, dialogue is, is queen. Like it's, you know, it's it's the most important thing. You have music, you have sound, mm -hmm. but dialogue is, you know, it will only, it, it will always win any, any uh, <laughs> battle, <laughs> you know, in, in the mix. Like yeah. it's the most important thing. So, yeah. And then when you write, you know, for, for the music, you always also want to avoid like whatever big sound stuff that may happen and they're not in your animatic or in your, you know, your current version of the picture. Um, you kind of want to imagine, okay, this is where, you know, if something, okay, let's say the, it lands or like, um, I don't know, there's a big hit in, in the actual show, then your music should not hit on that because it's not going to work, mm. you know. So, um, my friends, uh, his name is Matt, but he goes under the name Pranakasha Productions. Um, he's been uh, commenting and watching um, oh, cool. while we've been speaking uh, and asked this question um, about wh whether you have to clean up the orchestra parts yourself or... Um, <laughs> well, I, I definitely, I do, I do need an assistant at some point uh, down the line. Uh, I, I have been thinking that it would be very, very helpful. Um, so yeah, so far I've been cleaning up things on myself. It's a lot of, it's so much work. Um, but yeah, I have people who are helping me out with, uh, I mean, uh, you know, prepping, prepping the sessions. There's Moy Garcia who's been like super, super helpful, Jeff Gartenbaum. Um, so they're helping with preparing th sessions for, for recording. Um, then there's uh, Jeff Kricka, my orchestrator, who's like incredible. I can't even imagine, like it's, it's hard to, to say in words, how amazing he is um, in that he translates what I write and how my mock-up sounds. He translated that into an orchestra that's not always the size of what I originally wrote it. Um, 
because a lot of times like if the temp was bigger um you know if they use some some indiana jones or some mm -hmm. big Hans Zimmer score that was recorded with 80 or 100 musicians in, at Sony, and we don't have these budgets just yet. Um, so, <laughs> so, but you do want that feel. So it takes a really great orchestrator to figure out how to do, um, how to achieve the the maximum sound of you know of what we're capable of, and not just orchestrator but also mixer. Um, but yeah, so Jeff Jeff is really really fantastic, and yeah, I've worked with him for two years now, and he's he's really really incredible. So um, yeah, I, I do have people who help me out, but yeah, cleaning the MIDI is such a mess. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fun to do that like at three a.m. So yes, um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, also like I wondered like how how big the orchestra actually is. Um, that depends on like what episode and what budget you have. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, I think for the first episode we had like 64 musicians and we kind of stayed around these numbers. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, sometimes it's slightly bigger, slightly, so, sometimes it's slightly smaller, but, um, yeah, these, these are the numbers. It's, it's good numbers actually really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. so yeah, I mean, it, yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, Bob, do you have a final question? No, you've been a delight to to have on the <laughs> on the show. Uh, we wish you, you the best. Uh, you've got a very very promising career, and you've already accomplished a lot. Yeah. And uh, I know we'll uh, I know we'll be l watching and listening uh, to Star Trek Prodigy with great interest. We can't wait as yes. much. I, you know, Please I know watch. you're excited. We're excited um, as fans, and it looks spectacular. So yeah. Thank you Thanks. so much for joining us. Thank you. So guys. I wondered, I wondered uh, a final question. Like, what would you say is like the best part of working on Prodigy, or you know, just a wrap up? Uh, I think the people who are involved in that show, uh, Kevin, Dan, and Ben, uh, and all the writers, like, but but mainly Kevin, Dan, and Ben have been like they're an amazing inspiration, and they're they're very great, good team leaders. Like they're great captains of you know you want to follow them you want to make them happy and and they're very good at like just translating you know for me what what we're you know if whatever i'm i'm struggling with or whatever i i need help with like they are always right on point with their notes with their feedback with their direction and it, it's just so important to have a good team um mm -hmm. and then they're just great humans like just fun to be around and with and yeah so I, I think that's that's the best part for me uh, uh, yeah, great uh, speaking with you today thank you so much for coming on to the show yeah thank um, you guys we definitely look forward to seeing Star Trek Prodigy starting on uh, the 28th of October um, yes. with the first two episodes it will be aired then as you say in US and, and Canada <laughs> and presumably probably like the next day in in the uk oh really oh that's great <laughs> it it usually is for like lower decks uh, has been like the next day so, uh okay. on amazon uh but, yeah i guess I, I i don't think it has been an, announced to the uk details okay. yet but, yeah no i'm looking forward to it uh yeah i i, I think uh i think trekkies are going to be very happy with the show and and everyone will as well but Especially, especially the trackers. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. So thank you, guys. Thanks. Thanks to all our viewers. Um, thanks for watching, commenting, even if you're watching like after we've been live. Um, and please remember to like and subscribe uh, to this video. And we'll see you next time on the Scotch Tracker. Uh, track you later. All right. <laughs>